Hey everyone, so in order to pull this off for Sticksville, we need to understand the science behind this mission and then how to apply that science to build a successful project. That's the goal for this video. If you've done the bridge project with us before, then you're familiar with the concept of force. If not, no big deal, it's pretty simple. Force is essentially a push or a pull onto something. And if you think about this project, what's the main force at play? It's the gravitational force, which brings our egg and its casing down to the ground, and then the ground puts an upward force right back on it. And since it is our job to protect the egg, we're trying to minimize that impact and reduce the force felt at any one point on the egg as much as possible. So when our egg is first dropped from the very top, it has what's called potential energy. And as it travels towards the ground and gains speed, it gains what's called kinetic energy. By the time that egg reaches the ground, it's moving pretty quickly and things aren't looking too good for our egg to survive. But thanks to science, there's two principles that give us a little bit of hope. The first is called impulse, and no, not the feeling you get when you really want to buy something in the store, but impulse as it relates to engineering. See, impulse relates force to time, and what it says is the longer you can make a collision, the more you can spread out the force, and the less that force is felt at one specific time. And here's a couple quick examples. Imagine you jumped off the roof of your house onto the street. Well, you'd probably get a couple broken bones, right? But what if you put a trampoline that you're jumping on? That trampoline helps absorb your impact over time, and you won't get any broken bones. There's also an example of a train hitting a car. When you start to sort through your materials, see which ones you think can help absorb an impact. Think like a pillow. I already see some that give me some ideas. Believe it or not friends, NASA actually uses the concept of impulse when they land their rovers on different planets. They put an airbag system that deploys when they're about to crash into the surface that helps protect their expensive aircraft. So based on what you now know about impulse, can you quickly pause this video and ask yourself why NASA puts that airbag feature on their spacecraft and how it works? And speaking of NASA and airplanes, our next topic that's going to help our egg is called air resistance. On your screen right now is the long equation for air resistance, but throw that away. All it says is that the larger something is that's traveling through the air, the more air resistance that creates. Whereas if it's small, it will glide through the air nice and smooth. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Here's a great example. Here are two perfectly good pieces of newspaper. We're going to crumple this one up and make it a much smaller object, whereas this one stays pretty large against the air it's flowing through. We'll drop them at the same time, and my guess is that the smaller, more aerodynamic piece will fall much faster. Let's see. Another example is an airplane. There are incredibly smart engineers designing airplanes the way they do, with rounded edges and smooth shapes, so they glide through the air nice and seamless. But in our case, we want the opposite. We want a rough design and a big design so it really catches the air and the air helps slow down our egg and decrease the force felt by the ground when it finally hits it. Because a slower moving object is a much smaller force than a faster moving object. Ow! So you will see some examples here shortly. But again, when you're looking through your materials, try to identify materials that can really help grab that air and slow your egg drop down. So we hope that was insightful for you friends, and we hope you're excited to get going on this. We'll see you in the next video where we're going to show you some tips and examples for how to build one for yourself.